everyone who showed up. Uh, before we get started, I'll just read the Native Solidarity Statement. So we'd like to acknowledge that Concordia University is on the traditional territory of the Ganyi and Gehaga, a place which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange amongst nations. The Concordia Student Union recognizes and respects the Ganyi and Gehaga as the traditional custodians of the lands and waters on which we meet today. Uh, so with that, we'll move on to roll call. Uh, the sheet is right over there. Um, it should be going around. Please sign in so that we, we have quorum. Um, and with that, we'll move on to point number three, which is amended daycare motion. Lucy, for yeah, yours. Okay, I will read it out. It's exactly the same as the one from the last regular council meeting, except the numbers are different because and now it's not loading on my phone. This is embarrassing. Sorry, we will. We this meeting will will actually like end at some point. Um, I'm just gonna. If you give me a second, I'm gonna just bring it up on my computer. What are you whispering, Elias? <laughs> That's why he's whispering. <laughs> Not on my watch. Okay, here you go. All right. So, whereas the CSU Students Base Accessible Education Legal Contingency Silk Fund may be used for the quote renovation of and or repairs to such lands and buildings or parts thereof located at one or more sites considered suitable by the Council of Representatives of the CSU to serve as student centers, as stated in Special Bylaw I, whereas following the receipt of approval from the Quebec Ministère for la Famille uh, demolition may proceed on the site of the future CSU daycare at 1424 Bishop Street, whereas the cheapest quoted cost of demolition received through a formal bidding process is $55,538.67, including all taxes, whereas it is prudent to allocate an additional 15% in potential cost of demolition in consideration of the unforeseen circumstances related to current construction on Bishop Street outside of the future CSU daycare site, resulting in a total potential cost of $63,870. He resolved that $63,870 be allocated from the Silk Fund towards a demolition for the site of the future CSU daycare center in accordance with special bylaw uh, I. Thank you. We have a second. Robert, uh, your motivation. Uh, yeah, so a lot was uh, happening um, when this meeting, when this motion originally went to the last uh, regular council meeting. Um, I was provided with the wrong documentation. So this is really just to reflect the actual quoted uh, cost of uh, the, the lowest quoted cost available to us. And the reason we called uh, for this to be done at special council is because the sooner we get demolition done in the daycare center, the sooner we can make the daycare happen and uh, fulfill an important part of our mandate. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any discussion to be had on the motion? Okay, so if not, we'll move to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the motion as read by Lucy, please raise your placards. Okay, all, those, yeah, all those opposed? And any abstentions? All right, so the motion carries. Is there any more discussion to be had on the amended daycare motion? Okay, so if not, we'll move on to point number four, which is the silk fund motion. Eloise, the floor is yours. Yeah. So, where are in the CSU financial, financial the student space, accessible education, legal contingency fund, the SALC fund is currently accounted for in two separate lines, student center fund and SALC fund. Whereas, as of October 19, the student center fell. The student center center fund held six million two hundred twenty thousand and some, uh, and the Salic fund held uh, three million and sixty nine thousand. Whereas the student center fund referred in our bylaws as former Union Building Fund was superseded by the Salic fund, uh, whereas the distinct usage of these two funds was cancelled cancelled by the amendment of the special bylaw I at the November twenty fifteen by election. It resolved that the Student Center Fund be reconciled with the Student Space Accessible Education Legal Contingency Fund. Be it further resolved that this reconciled fund be named uh, South Fund. Right, wait a second. Robert, the floor is yours, Eloise. Yeah, so this is just housekeeping. Uh, and since we already have a motion that requires the approval of the Sun Committee, it was uh, normal to like have this presented at uh, this special council meeting rather than the council meeting uh, next week. Uh, basically, yeah, so the Union Building Fund was like kind of the ancestor of the Salic Fund, created at the time with the purpose of acquiring a building. Uh, it was superseded a number of years later by the creation of the Salic Fund, so uh, 
if I for the speed of it was going now to the power fan. Um, and in our previous iteration of the battle, there were still a few uses that were acceptable for one, but not the other. Uh, this has been uh, cancelled by the amendment to the bylaws that passed in the by-election, uh, like the recent by-election. So now there's no different uses for those two funds. Uh, so just for accounting purposes, uh, it just makes sense to have them under one line rather than two. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what it is about. Thank you. Is there any discussion to be had on this motion? Okay, so if not, we'll move to a vote. Uh, so all those in favor of the Silk Fund motion vote, please raise your placards. All right, all those opposed? And any abstentions? All right, so the motion carries unanimously. Is there any more discussion to be had on this agenda point? Is it on this agenda point? Uh, just, yeah, I was wondering if anyone didn't manage to sign in yet. I'll do it. Okay. Okay. Move to adjourn. Okay. Do we have a second? Uh, uh, All right. Did you have anything to? No, on the not on the motion. I just, well, like no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Also, we before we leave, uh, there's an event tomorrow from it's a Saint Uh It's on in the Silver so Lounge. Um, and it's hosted by the Black uh, Studies event series. Um, there's going to be alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks and food. And you all should come because like our previous speakers are going to come. And uh, we want your feedback. If anyone wants to get involved, <laughs> talk to your to your friends. Invite them on on Facebook. Is it free? It's free. <laughs> you all should start with that. Though. <laughs> it's free. All right. Thank come. you. Every oh, sorry. Sorry. Come. 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 Thank you everyone for showing up. Yes, sorry, one more thing. Uh, There's no announcement, so you guys can just talk. Just let you know. The meeting's I done. Like, uh, thing, uh, Board of Governors, it's still happening. It's a, it's a thing. Um, but uh, really important things we want people to mobilize for, uh, even though it's exam season. Um, if you've never been to a Senate meeting before, um, it's one this Friday from 2 to 4. It's a really new and exciting place to be able to uh, study. Uh, you get to watch professors on their emails uh, while like voting on things. Um, but we're going to be pushing for cohort pricing to be as just a point of discussion for senators to be able to discuss it. Um, we don't think the administration particularly wants to do this, but if we have a show of students in the audience, um, we can at least have physical proof. That's like students want to hear this being discussed before it goes to a vote of the Board of Governors. Um, so come study in the EV in a fancy little conference room. Um, also, uh, Aloise will be communicating with you all through the Facebook group, but uh, we also are doing some visibility things on the day of the Board of Governors meeting next Wednesday. And uh, yeah, it's a last push before the semester is over to try and get some accountability. Yeah, so uh, next Wednesday, 3 p.m., a megaphone, food, free coffee. Uh, come bring your friends, come and also.